half inch out of range and you're like, dude. Even then, some games had got to where they'd be like, eh, if you're off by like up to half an inch, you know, you're still within range or something. But anyway, they finally were like, you can pre-measure. It's like, yes, you know. We passed our luck check. It's the No Class Podcast. With your host, Eddie. And Matt. Well, hello and goodbye and a run around Sue to you. How are you out there in podcast land? And how are you, Matt? Trying to catch my breath after that introduction, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Let me let me lean back. You haven't a done bit. it in a while, or done a podcast for that matter. I'm trying to think how long it's been in actual time since we've done one of these in dog years. Um, too darn long. I miss all of y'all. Mm, kisses. Anyway, and we missed you too. There you go. Actually, I haven't even been seeing Matt all that much, dear listeners. Yes, indeed. Being so busy saving lives and whatnot, you know, and the devil's business. But there are times when we've like seen each other every day of the week and we're sick of each other. <laughs> and now we see each other maybe once a week to game or something like that. And we're, we're like, still sick of each other. And then we're making moon eyes. It's like, I missed you so much. Anyway. Well, we've talked about it before. When you're gaming, mm -hmm. you don't really get that social chit chat. Like, right. well, you were just with them for four to six hours and you didn't go, hey, how's the family? Yeah. No, we got in, we got the game and got out. Yeah. That's, I remember having exes that would be like, um, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to go hang out with so-and-so a gaming buddy. And they'd be like, well, you saw him Tuesday. I'd be like, no, I saw him, but we didn't get to really interact. We were playing a game together. Yeah. That's one reason why I didn't mind so much when I was running, when I was in nursing school and I was running, um, that fourth edition campaign scales of war, wasn't it scales of war? Mm -hmm. And, um, we might spend the first 30 minutes of the game session commiserating. And I didn't mind that because it was a chance to, we were all not just gaming together. We were friends, if not friendly. And it'd be like, well, how you been? What are you gaming? What are you doing? It's almost like almost a version of our little podcast here. Like, Hey, what have you been gaming? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been playing X. That sounds cool. I should check that out. Well, with yeah. the Osric group, we have 30 minutes to an hour right in the beginning where it's like the social hour. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to cut in. Everybody's you know, socializing and having a good time. It's yeah. not like we're on the clock or something. Well, one thing I kept back in my mind, we're here to have a good time as long exactly. as, and it'd usually be Gary to be the one at about 30 minutes to an hour would look up at me. I'm over here with my hand on my, um, my chin on my hand, just smiling. And he'd be like, all right, that's enough of that. Let's get to the game. And I'd be like, all right, Gary reined him in. I didn't have to, you know? Well, sometimes as the GM, you're like, well, is this on me? Like, well, somebody is sitting there going, oh, I wish he would rein him in and start the game right now. But I, I mean, know. everybody seems like they're having a good time right. and we'll have side conversations going on. Like, uh, Carrie and Kathy will be talking and mm -hmm. Bradley will be letting us all know the latest masters of the universe news. And of course, Ron would hate to miss one moment of that. Yeah. So we're usually having our big table conversations going on. So it's a right. lot of fun with that. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, it's good when, cause we've had tables where we might've game together, but we weren't exactly chummy. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. So, well, that's, uh, we've talked out about it before where you have your friends and your gaming friends that yeah. are like acquaintances. And it's like, yeah. you want to go watch a movie? No, we are not friends like that. Yeah. And it's you'd, like, Oh, okay. Yeah, you'd be like, Oh, oh wow. I, I thought we were. Know. Yeah. I remember one time I was like, hey, everybody that I game with, why don't you come out to my house and we'll just, you know, break bread and have fun and hang out, maybe watch a nerd movie or something. And it's like my buddy Eddie was the only one that, me and my wife would love to be there. Otherwise, crickets from the table. I'm like, aha. You know? It's kind of like you're the booty call. <laughs> Pretty much. It's That's, like, yeah, on certain nights when I need to do my dirty business, <laughs> I'll deign to come down and hang out with you. But any other time, I don't want to see your face. Act like you don't know me. Yeah, the if side we meet chick. on the streets, yeah. walk over to the other side. The side chick. I like it. That's funny. But great analogy as usual, sir. But anyway, yeah, man, it's, I was like talking to Eddie yesterday and I said, dude, dude, we, we, we got to do a PCAST, you know? And I mean, sadly to say, I don't really have a lot to share, but I'm just, uh, you know, I, I want to interact with everybody. And, um, and Eddie gave me some numbers the other day that were rather heartwarming. So I want to thank all of y'all for putting up those numbers, man. Yeah. He was a little surprised that the podcasts without him were doing so much better. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't, we won't say anything about that to him, but I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll try not to be heartbroken, you know? Um, but anyway, I think it may, could be cause those are shorter and sweeter. Maybe they're a lot sweeter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. They're full of sweets. Yeah. But uh, I think I've told you about this off podcast, off the air, as we'll say. Yeah. But uh, one of our 
uh, listeners, Jonathan K, mm-hmm. dropped us a line and oh, was cool. giving us some ideas for. By the way, this is episode fifty-one. Ah. Whereas episode fifty, it's out there somewhere. It's waiting to occur. Exactly. But he was giving us some ideas for uh, fifty and fifty beyond. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, a lot of podcasts when it comes back to episode fifty, that's when you get the original host back together or something. Like somebody has left the show by then. Mm-hmm. So it is kind of a milestone just for even this simple little podcast wow. that we've been managed to keep it together for a couple of years. Yeah. Well, that's like, uh, what's the big booyah original DCC podcast? Um, I want to say Spellburn, but that's yeah, not Spellburn, it. Yeah. Spellburn. Yeah. And that's actually had to change the, the host rotation. Like they're, I'm not saying it's a, I don't quote me, but it might be a completely different crew or only one of the originals or they left or came back. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's went through a rotation. So, I mean, interesting. Yeah. So episode 50, we are talking about doing a, I guess a live play. You might be able to watch it while we do it. Some streaming somewhere and then we'll upload it somewhere like YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we're getting the, uh, roster of heroes together. Mm Mm-hmm. Some of the names that you've heard us mention, you'll finally be able to put a face with the name and, you and you'll be scarred it. forever. It'll be, yeah, ours will be bad enough, but these guys <laughs> take the cake. We're going to have somebody else uh, probably run it so me and Matt can do our hosting duties and uh, ruin their fun. Make it hard on the GM instead of the other way around. We're talking about running our half-orc party in oh, yeah. 5e, mm-hmm. which those guys should lend themselves to some laughs. Yeah, a bunch usually, of long kids. Usually we catch ourselves laughing some of the hardest that we do playing the orcs. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking about some people reduced to tears. So th- this should be interesting to say the least. I'm looking forward to it. So check your mailbox for the invite. Yeah. And, and Jonathan, thank you so much. We practically beg for people to give us some input. So you're my hero. I hope we're doing something nice for Jonathan. And we are. He is going to be the first recipient of our honorary listener of the decade oh, right. and we're going to send him one of our fine uh no class podcast t-shirts with our awesome design gratis yep that's it free shipping even wow so uh jonathan if you're listening that shirt is on the way to my house so once it comes in i can get it on the way to your, your house. house maybe you'll have it in time yeah. you can listen to a long con episode or something and not uh, to be, be bragged but i mean that shirt is sexy i had a, a bevy of young ladies i was wearing it and they were like oh hey grandpa we like your shirt and i'm like uh thank you i guess you know mm-hmm. so anyway well i like the part where you said some of my mom's records have that same font <laughs> and like this yeah 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 She's in her young 20s, so I'm like, yeah, that's about right. So, yeah. If you didn't recognize the uh, font or whatever, it's from the Debbie Debbie Boone's Greatest Hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there you go. There's another aged reference for you. Exactly. Well, that's like uh, the name of the game I'm running at LongCon this year's Hellbent for Leather. I'm sure you've heard that song. No, I've never heard of it. Really? Oh, get out of here. This is when we need a video podcast. Hellbent. Hell bent for leather. Doom, doo, 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 doo. Anyway, not their best song, but what? I always liked it. So what's their best song? Oh, shit. Uh, Run for the Hills, maybe. You just embarrassed yourself. Really? Yep. You, you caught me on the, off the top of my head. I'm just blurting shit out. But that was them, right? Nope. Oh, crap. You sure it wasn't Juice Priest? Yes, Iron Maiden. Oh, Iron Maiden did it. Oh, okay. Well, damn. But you know, and I love Iron Maiden as well, though. And there's a little, you know, whatever. But anyway. I heard move on to the next topic. That's what that's what I just mumbled. Yeah. So do we have any more small talk and chit chat in the beginning of this? Or do we need to go on to books and comic books? Let's get to books and comic books. Do you have any books and comic books? Uh, I need to read, but I have not had the time. But I will I'll teach read. you. Thanks. I, would you please? It's not just fun. It's fundamental. Anyway. I, definitely mental. Kind of like I talked about before, I've been playing way too many video games. Yeah. And I just got HBO Max. Ooh, long, so long. I'm trying to get some appreciation out of that. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I guess I'll go to that before this or whatever. Mm-hmm. But HBO Max has a, you know, in the different like search criteria or whatever, mm-hmm. the different categories, they'll have like leaving soon. So it's like, you better watch that this month or it's going to be gone and you're not going to get a chance. And that's how you get me to watch a bunch of stuff. Sure. When you're like, it's going off of our streaming service. And especially where it's like, is this going to end up somewhere else? Like if it's Seinfeld or The Office or something, you're like, yeah, okay. It's going from one place to another. To Hulu, I don't care. Which you probably already but have. some of these are like, 
are they going to be on any streaming for yeah. a while? So yeah. definitely uh, was interested in that. But books and comic books. Um, you're not here for our Osric group, or you would appreciate this a little bit more, that for Osric we have a, probably in our social hour, we have at least 30 minutes of Masters of the Universe talk because mm-hmm. Bradley is just loving the new line and everything that's out. Oh, good. So I ended up, and I've, like we said before, I ended up reading some of the Masters of the Universe comics mm-hmm. recently. It was like a six-issue limited series. Mm-hmm. So the first five, I think, you don't even get He-Man. You get Prince Adam and Tila fighting their way through to kind of recover the power. Mm-hmm. And it was so timely with all the bull crap that went on re- with Revelations. Mm-hmm. It's like, how, do you, how could you do a He-Man show without He-Man? Well, here's how you do a He-Man comic without He-Man. But yeah, they did a good job. And it was fantastic. Okay. I can't recommend that to you enough. It's the Masters of the Universe DC 2012 series. Oh, wow. And check that out if you want to see Prince Adam hmm. be a badass. Cool. But cool. that one is kind of like Skeletor won, but instead of killing them, he just erased their minds. So then they're kind of vaguely remembering this stuff, and mm-hmm. they go on the quest to kind of uh, take back the power and overthrow him without even knowing so much what's going on. It's just like we keep getting attacked along the way. And it's one of those things. It's like if you'd left it alone, if the villain had completely left you alone, he probably would have won. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's weird. It's different, but I really like it. And I think if you're a masters of the universe person, you'll enjoy it. You'll appreciate it. Well, good. That's a, I might check that out. Okay. Uh, Oh, still waiting on immortal Hulk. 50, which should wrap it all up. Mm -hmm. That should be out any day now is my understanding. And so now I'm waiting for that as listeners will be waiting for our episode 50. Mm -hmm. Do you have any TV shows? Did you manage to watch some TV? I do. And a quick aside before I forget, you know, uh, one of the guys that we've met through um, NTRPG, John Lyles, Mm -hmm. um, a really nice guy. He was at the, the thing the other day, but turns out he and I got to chatting and you and he have something in common. He has quite the platform shrine or whatever. And I was like, you and Eddie, I said, because he's trying to have that app with me. I'm like, I, I can keep up. But I was like, you know who you need to talk to is Eddie. You know? So is he a Masters of the Universe guy? No, I'm, 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 I'm talking or? about platform games. I know this is a complete oh, okay. crazy went, aside. But I knew I was going to completely forget if he's I He's a big video gamer. Video, video game. Yeah, he's big platform and he has all the old platforms. Consoles. On, consoles. I'm sorry, consoles. But I thought, I, I thought they call them platforms nowadays, don't they? Or am I crazy? More console, but you could say like what it's on you could say that i guess yeah, yeah. but sorry, excuse me, consoles but yeah he's a, he's got all the consoles and all the games and there's he's got some holes and i said well i know someone who might be able to help fill them for you so there you go do not offer my services to fill other gentlemen's holes matt but anyway well you say that now anyway but sorry In aside public. so as far as tv and movies well, absolutely TV. Now, now you caught me um so for tv um I, okay, let's see. TV specifically, not movies. That's where it's kind of kind of blurry, right? You know. Yeah, movies is next though, okay. and then some of the stuff it's like, well, it's a special on Netflix. So does that make it a movie mm. or does that make it a TV well, show? Well, this was a TV show that's now on Netflix. But I you remember the last time we had met, and we talked. I had mentioned I'd watched a thing that was like a. I can't remember what they called it. But it's a thing where they talked to all the surviving members of of Monty Python. About, oh, yeah. you know, they kind of dished on each other and behind the scenes stuff from back in the day. And, and luckily they talked with Terry Jones before he had passed away. Um, well that spurred me to look and yep, Monty Python's is on Netflix as well as that particular, uh, thing was. So I've been watching Monty Python's flying circus and it turns out just a few days ago, it turned 52 years old as of October 5th. So mm-hmm. it's hard to believe it's been 50, it's been half a century since Monty Python's flying. I mean, I'm just like, wow. I only celebrate zeros and fives. I'm sorry. Yeah. But anyway, I just thought that might be an added little bit of, t- I always try to have a little tidbit of trivia along with. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. But yeah. isn't it weird now that you will get these pop-ups like every day in Facebook or something? It's been, it's been three years or it's been 13 years or it's been 37. It's like, let me know when it's. 35 or 40 or 10 or yeah 
a nice round figure. Yeah, there. that's like when it was like the 30th anniversary of uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Something you're like, holy crap, 30 years, you know. And then I like, accept that when it's like it's 33. Yeah, yeah. You said come back to me when it's yeah 35, 40. So that's as far as TV shows. That's as far as I can remember. Wow. Yeah, the only TV show I've watched lately. You've just been busy saving lives. You've had no time. That's right. That's 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 for true. At work or in bed. That's right. You know it. You that's know it. it. All right. Well, here's one we've talked about before. It's an old show that I'm rewatching, and I mean, uh, by older around 2010, maybe is when it started off. Mm -hmm. Spartacus. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're watching that again. Uh, very much wants to be like 300 mm -hmm. instead of gladiator maybe but it's around mm -hmm. that time period where that was like ooh la la let's do there's some of that stuff gigantic graphic ridiculous there's not much that much blood in your body sprays of blood yep. and stuff and because it, and it's all like cg or whatever you yep. know yeah lots of Green extremely screen. tasteful nudity yeah extremely tasteful but that's one of those things if you can deal with that there's mm -hmm. a really good show in there as well mm -hmm. but if you just want blood thrown everywhere and some boobies mm -hmm. maybe that's your show too and there, there's some penises flying around too you know can't 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 neglect that crowd you know you're giving off a vibe today for sure you Matt. know it buddy filling holes flying around penises <laughs> <Ooh -wee. laughs> here we go so anyway if you haven't checked that out before i still highly recommend it to you yeah. what if the uh marvel on disney plus what if yeah what if it was on uh -huh. what if it's uh season concluded so oh, i wow. think it went like nine episodes and wrapped up mm -hmm. and i give it a solid eh, uh kind of hit or miss b how about a nice even b well b's not bad I'll good not great it's worth checking out it's probably yeah. better than some of the live action shows mm -hmm. that they've done i still haven't watched what was the one winter soldier and falcon, or falcon did you ever watch soldier? agents of shield nope eh, it just know, didn't sound the first season was okay and the second season was okay but it was just kind of like it was and then it just kind of went downhill from there well, while we're talking about Marvel shows, I guess ones that we did watch, there are now rumors flying around that the Punisher's coming back and maybe Daredevil as well. Oh, wow. And, and I and hope keeping the oh, same cast. Good, because and I think Punisher's a lot more firm on that, that that's going to happen. Good. Well, because I'd heard a rumor the other day someone was talking about, yeah, they said, oh, hey, they're bringing back Daredevil and they're going to keep Charlie Cox. But then they were him and hot about Punisher. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because Punisher was great. And that guy, I can't think of his name right now, but... um. Oh, he was phenomenal. Yeah, he makes a fantastic Punisher. Oh, he, he brought that intensity. Well, it's like I told them, the episode of the Daredevil where they had the crossover and basically Kingpin standing there on that uh, that upper deck watching as those guys come to assassinate the Punisher and what he does to them. Oh, man. Tell me you weren't on the edge of your seat. Kingpin could have his own show. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, De, De, De Afinara, whatever. That guy did a great job. Yep as the kingpin so i hope they bring him back as well yeah for sure yeah yeah all right uh archer watch a little bit of that okay how okay I I'm, think I'm, the last I'm, episode was i'm last not time. far but i do intend to watch more when i have time I, I like that they went back to being spies again all right are you ready for a spoiler spoil me but what about our listeners you're going to spoil them yeah here's your warning you might want to jump ahead a minute it's not a big spoiler if you're yeah worried about spoilers or big archer fan but this it's more of a like i was wondering what they were going to do with that mm -hmm. so as you know jessica walters died and we had talked about that before in the uh, pop culture stuff mm -hmm. but apparently she had recorded everything already up to the point of last night's episode oh so last night's episode she was just barely in it Mm -hmm. And I think they did the like, here are some lines that she recorded before. Mm -hmm. So you can somewhat go like, oh yeah. And so it's very, very limited. Mm -hmm. And cause it's one of those, like she pops up for a second and goes, that's what I think. And then boom, she's gone for, you know, 10 more minutes or something. And then pops up and goes, how dare you? And is gone again. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what they did, and I guess this is the somewhat spoiler thing is for writing her off, you know, the actor that played Woodhouse mm -hmm. died as well. Yeah. And he died on the show. Yeah. So she does not die on the show. Oh, wow. They wrote her out as retiring. Mm -hmm. And it ends with her and Ron 
on the beach together. Oh. So it had a very sweet ending. Because, you know, the guy who played Ron passed away. What Ron year Cadillac. So? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it had a very sweet ending. I don't oh. think that's too much of a spoiler because I yeah. don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But it had a, a sweet ending. Yeah. Archer overall has been kind of hit and miss, too. There's been yeah. some good episodes. And uh, Barry shows up. Yeah. So I always enjoy Barry, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so, well, Barry, the episode I saw, he was in that. And they're both cracking on... Uh, uh, Oh shoot! I the I can't think of his name. Cyril Figgis. C- Cyril Figgis, yeah. And so, yeah, poor Cyril, yeah. But anyway, he keeps giving him the candy bars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that was pretty good. That was well done. Uh, more spoilerific. Have you heard all the buzz about the Squid Game? Netflix Squid Game. Oh, okay, this is new and different to you. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. Well, you are crazy. So but... this is the thing. This is the next up and coming like. Um, Tiger King or I think it's some other show on, that's been on Netflix where people are like, you got to watch this. You got to watch this mm-hmm. or the game of Thrones or whatever is the hot fad. Show. Which, did you know there's a new game of Thrones spinoff? Yeah. yeah. Something dragons of blah, blah, blah. Or, House of dragons or yeah. something like that. So anyway, the squid game is, I, I don't think it's too spoilerific to say it's kind of like battle Royal. Uh, the Japanese movie or Hunger Games or something like that. Hmm. Here are some contestants. You will fight to the death for a prize. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. It is South Korean. Hmm. And it's really people that are in just such severe debt that they have no option but to do this. Hmm. They're given a choice. I mean, this this is fictitious. It's not real, is it? No, it's real. They're really no bad. Uh, They're not shooting sure people win. in the face. Well, I was going to get, I was getting excited, man. Prizes. Well, I'll tell you this. It's about people that have so much debt mm-hmm. that it's kind of like they're such in financial bad shape. They almost have no choice but to do it. It's like you can come risk your life or you can go back to your crappy life where, you know, uh, loan sharks are going to break your legs and you're going to get thrown in jail or X, Y, Z where, you know, your horrible life, you'll be alive, but is it worth living? So these are like people married to my ex. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, could you do this show in the U S sadly? Yes. I think you could. If you want to pay your medical bill, yeah. there's that one. There's our political one for the day. Our yeah. political zinger. Well, you know, I love people when, when, when they were talking about, uh, Breaking Bad, we're like, only in America would you have to cook meth and become a meth kingpin to pay your insurance bill when you have cancer. Exactly. And I was like, yeah, there's there's something to that, you know. So I will recommend the Squid Game to our listeners that enjoy watching people get shot in the face. There you go. Well, I like movies where people get shot in the face, but those are different kind of movies. Oh, man. <laughs> he won't be back next time, folks. It'll just be us. We'll be in our safe bubble. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> this is where we need a video podcast again. Matt is trying to recover from his joke. <sighs> anyway, so it's a pretty good show. Sounds good. I want to say it was maybe nine episodes, and it's one of those things, since you haven't heard about it yet, mm-hmm. and I don't even think you'll watch it, but it's one of those where the spoilers are coming, where the huge wave of spoilers will hit the internet. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll be like, why didn't X do Y? Like when you I was won't believe it. Back when I was into The Walking Dead, many, yep. many, many, many years ago, I would make it a point that I used to record it on Sunday night on like with TiVo or whatever. And when I, I was off on what Tuesdays it seemed like, and I'd watch it Tuesday when I was off work. Well, I learned to like don't look at Facebook. Sunday night or Monday because some jackass would be like, I can't believe they killed Tyrese. And I'd be like, you asshole. You know, maybe someone hasn't seen the thing yet. Do you have to put that out there? You know, or could you maybe say spoiler or something and then, you know, then post below like, all right, now let's, 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 let's kid it's about the walking dead spoiler or something. But anyway, so I learned don't look at you damn social media or whatever, you know? So I might actually do a little, uh, five minute spoilerific blurb on squid game for mm-hmm. folks that are like i want to just talk about it and hear about it blah 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 so i won't do that on the actual podcast though but if you've got your playlist going or something you might want to make sure you skip that one but for i've got a feeling you won't end up watching this i might you never know well if you're going to like i told my wife we got to do it now before people spoil it exactly yeah. it's going to be one of those things where yeah. everybody's like and uh, for example what if 
I'd see that in my Facebook feed all the time. Yeah, like, people talking about You won't believe it. what happened last night or why what this person did uh, totally negates this in the, Mar in the Marvel movie world. And it's yeah. like, why? I haven't even had one day to enjoy this. Yeah. And when that's where I've, it's, I know it's got to be at least decent because I can kind of put my finger on the pulse of things by like my Facebook feed and the nerdosphere as I call it. And now it's been a lot of buzz but is about it, what if. But is it people talking about it or is it sites talking about it? Like now that you get the news. It's, it's actual people. Actual news feed. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I'm, I'm friends with, say, like, you know, Webb out of Houston. He's the part of the what the you know the dragoons um and austin. I, yeah austin that's why i said austin and uh uh yeah and some and i'm just saying as as a for example and so you know and then there's adrian and jonathan so i mean and a lot of other people that a lot of times i go well we're cut from a similar cloth they have a lot of same interests if they like it maybe i'll like it you know but even then i've heard some of them kind of like mileage may vary or or like seem like michael stewart was like well this one was better than that one and things like that so hmm I anyway. really will admit that I don't follow anybody on Facebook. And that, it doesn't really show up in that my That probably helps your sanity. And so. that helps my sanity. Because yeah. you hate where it's like, I really like that guy. And then yeah. it's like, little did I know. But you know what? I don't want to go down that road. But it's one of those things to where, road. yeah, it's, it's that, that's one comment out of how many thousands that you probably would have agreed with. So anyway. Not always. Well, yeah, I hear you. Not always. Anyway, um, but yeah, so so that so what if sounds good. Squidbillies or whatever sounds good. Squidly diddly. Squidly diddly. Uh, you just happened to mention a little bit earlier before we started recording mm -hmm. is uh, the new Chappelle special. Yeah. The Closer. The Closer. So I finished up Squid Games and I was like, well, let me see if I can get something to lighten the mood. Right. And I watch The Closer, Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. It didn't lighten the mood too much. <laughs> there was a few things up front where I had some laughs, but it's very, like a lot of things these days, it's political and it's not like... I agree with your view or I don't agree with your view. It just didn't make me laugh that much. So it was okay, but I wouldn't rush out to see it like some of the other ones. Yeah. I, a lot of his other ones have been funnier. Well, I know that he'd done those two a couple of years ago. I think they were like back to back or at the same time or close together. And I want to think he got paid, what, $50 million a piece or $50 million for the both of them. I don't know. There was something crazy. Like he had to do a five or six special deal. And yeah. I think he's had like one come out a year or something like that. Yeah. And so, I mean, so yeah, maybe so for all five he got. So it's $10 million a piece, whatever. I'm happy for him. And I really like Dave Chappelle. And, but I know that in the, uh, I, it seemed like the second one, he kind of got in some trouble on that one. I think we talked about. And so this one, he just, he decided to grab that shovel in both hands and keep digging. Yeah. Yeah. But I like a lot of his specials and right, right. I'm trying to think about what the one was. Well, there's actors or comedians that I might not always agree with them, but I like, I can appreciate their work. Yeah. You know? So anyway. All right, now some movies. Did you have any time for movies? And I did. And so it's funny was, um, so I'm really tickled that we've got a lot of great special guests coming to uh, Long Con, which we didn't talk about Long Con at the beginning of the podcast. We broke with our usual mold there. But um, we've got a number of special guests and, and beloved gaming buddies coming. And it just, we were talking this yesterday. It's just, just by happenstance. We've got, we always have a pretty good portion of DCC and its derivatives on our roster of games but this year we've got like even before Beatty put in his games which by the way david Beatty's coming ooh la la you know as a special guest but we had like four or five weird frontiers games that's his baby weird frontiers which is a dcc weird west game for you who might not know really neat game i think it's still available to kickstart it's going to be a book you could bludgeon someone to death with it's like mm -hmm. close to closing in on a thousand pages or something but anyway poor david um definitely but, but anyway that's why it's taking so long to get out because it's like we'll add one more thing well let's add well we did do that one stretch goal anyway but yeah we have a ton of weird frontiers coming and so i really to kind of help get in that mindset because i wanted to write and have an adventure available which i'm doing hell bent for leather and that one um so i started watching some westerns to kind of get in the the mindset and so first thing I watched, a classic. Some would say, you know, maybe not Clint Eastwood's best, but it's always been one of my favorites, The Outlaw, Josie, Josie Wales. Wales. And there's so many quotable lines yeah, from that. Yeah, that's one of my yeah. favorites. Yeah. And uh, just just love that movie. And so I rewatched it, um, and it was interesting watching it 
this many years later, because I can remember probably watching it when I was a kid in my teens, and probably some one time again in my thirties and seeing that movie through a di- you're like you're not the same man at thirty you were at eighteen, and then watching it again now at like fifty one and each and now I'm going, oh yeah, you know. So it's just interesting, you know, older and wiser. You hope. Well, give us a for ex- example here. Well, it's like. I mean, I would think in my teens watching the part where, uh, uh, what was the gal that he was married to for a while that was in all of his damn movies back then? She's found in the Sandra Locke. Yeah. And it's like, she's found in the wagon and like the guy, they're about to, you know, brutally do something terrible to her as a woman. And so basically I remember as a teenager being going, Oh my God, you know, and just, just not, not like I'm traumatized by it. But still I was like, Oh my God. But now that you're older, you're like, yeah, it's not so bad. Well, I mean, no, no, but it's, but it's kind of understanding more than you live long enough. You understand the horrific depths to which human beings can, you know, stoop or whatever. You have a better understanding of evil now. Yeah. Thank you. But but that's kind of like I've said before, when I worked in psychiatric medicine and you couldn't wrap your head around what these patients would do. That's because you're not crazy. So your mind doesn't go there. You know, it was well, like the big meme joke about like when I was a kid, I identified, I want to be Superman or Batman as an adult. You kind of identify a little more with the Joker or penguin or something. You're like, I kind of get them more. I, you know, but anyway, um, but watching that and then it, you know, at 50 something, yeah, it's like, but like the part where they're like, Hey, Hey, you know, don't damage the goods, but you can have the old lady, you know? And I'm like, wow. But anyway, um, but Allah just wills great movie. If for some bizarre reason, you've never seen it, go watch it. You're welcome. I got the gold right here, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's just, I mean, yeah. Anyway, there's a, just in like the part where, uh, the guy is when he's, uh, a snake oil salesman selling his, his elixir. Hmm. Yeah, which is funny that I should watch that right about the time somebody mm. decided to play. How's it on stains? Yeah, and I love the part where he spits the back. How is it on stains? I mean, that's just awesome. But the guy gets him back later, you know. Um, it makes spitting on everything fashionable, too, if you oh, watch yeah. that movie. Oh, yeah, because that dog, <laughs> the dead guy. You know, I mean, yeah, he's, he's constantly got a big old chaw to back in him. But it's funny. I grew up with guys that they didn't have a chew in their mouth, you know. Um, okay. And then to make it a little more modern, then, asking for recommendations from my good friend, uh, 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 Netflix, it, it encouraged me to watch the hateful eight. Okay. Now I'm interested. Yeah. And so, uh, b- being that I think when he wrote that he had just recently done Django, I think, correct. I'm pretty sure he did. When he wrote it. Well, okay. I think he had done Django. And then he decided he is silent. Oh, okay. Django, whatever. Quotable. And so anyway, that he, he was in that Western mindset. And so he wanted to do hateful eight. And if anyone remembers the controversy about this, somebody got hold of his original mock-up, you know, whatever you want to call it. The, the thing he'd written and leaked to the internet. And he stamped his feet and turned purple and pouted and said, I'm not going to do it now because someone leaked it or whatever. And then he changed his mind and he ended up doing it anyway, of course. And it's hard to believe. I thought, yeah, that was just a few years ago. This came out in 2015. It's mm-hmm. six years old. I was like, holy crap. I saw it in the theaters. Wow. That's how interested I was. Yeah. And so, no, because I mean, Samuel Hill is awesome. Always been a big uh, Kurt Russell fan. Oh, yeah. And then what's funny, I'd never heard of that one guy who played Chris Maddox, but he was in a few things after that. That might have been one of his first real breakout roles. Or maybe not. You're giving me that look. No, that's the guy who's like, I'm the new sheriff or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Chris Maddox. He was from, he was in The Shield. Oh, he see, plays I a never real watched that. jerk in that. Uh-huh. Uh, brilliantly done. Yeah. And he's in Django Unchained. Okay. And, yeah. uh. He was in Sons of Anarchy a little. Oh, wow. But he is like the go-to racist. Yeah. If you want somebody to play a racist, that's the guy. Well, and because I think, is that a genuine Southern accent or does he Yeah, act I think that? so. Yeah, see, so I mean, the accent's very genuine. They'll be he, like, no, he's English. And be like, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, but I mean, how many times I got a little perturbed about that was, we've I'm sure we've got plenty of American actors and or <laughs> Southern actors, but if you're on the walking. We've got plenty of racists yeah, that'll play but, a racist. But, but, but if you're going to do The Walking Dead, at one point, like everyone got a hold on accent. Next thing you know, it's like, you'd hear him in an interview and you're like, holy shit, where's he from? Uh, Auckland, Australia, uh, uh, New Zealand, England. I'm like, can we not get somebody, you know. I wish we had more English actors playing 
Southerners and bring some class to it. Exactly. Right, Ace? Yeah, yeah. Wink, wink. Don't get me wrong. I have nothing wrong with people from these different countries, but I thought, wow. I mean, you know, it's like everybody on that show. losing our international audience. But I will say, oh, hush. But I will say that they did a damn fine job with the, with the accents. I guess the one guy was, who was the old guy who was a veterinarian? I th- and even him, I don't know if he had, he was from the South, but he was American at least. But I remember he was also in um, The Heartbreak Kid with that Southern accent, you know, Bo so, and Bew. Anyway, so how did you like the movie? I enjoyed the movie. You know, typical uh, Quentin Tarantino, he's always got to just go too far. He's That's got to go too far. That's what I was about, how you were going to react to there's that. There's always going to be one part where the show, I mean, otherwise there's gore, there's the, the copious. so cold. Yeah, the copious word use of the, the N-word, whatever. I, you know, all that, whatever, you know, that's Quentin Tarantino by now it's part and parcel, but he's always got to go and see, and you knew what I'm talking about when I'm saying going too far. So apparently I'm sure you love that, but I'm just, saying, yeah, but needless to say, it was like, but that's Quentin Tarantino. I mean, he's like, I got, I got to crank the outrageous bullshit to 11 or whatever at some point in the movie. So anyway, but overall though, that aside, I really enjoyed it. It's like a raunchy Tarantino movie. That's a Western. That's a mystery. So it was, it was good, you know? And, uh, yeah, I mean, overall I liked it. I mean, there as usual aspects of it that I'm like there, uh, this is nonsensical or, huh? Or, you know, but whatever, you know, uh, overall I enjoyed it. So any other movies? No. All right. Well, here's, oh, go ahead. Other than I was going to say, I, because kind of like you, I was going to touch on um, touch it. The Heartbreak Kid is about to go off of Netflix. So mm-hmm. I, I was rewatching it last night. But that's one I've watched. I think I own it if I'd look for the disc. But anyway, it's, 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 it's the Farley Brothers. So you know it's going to be raunchy and stupid and silly or whatever. But it's one that makes me belly laugh all through it. So if you've never seen The Heartbreak Kid or if you have Netflix, check it out. It goes away October 31st. And done. And seen. All right. How about this one? This blast from the past for things that are that were left HBO that I just so happened to watch for some bizarre reason. Clute. K-L-U-T-E. Clute. Donald Sutherland. Oh, yeah. And Jane Fonda. Mm-hmm. 1971? Yeah, that's an old one. Have you seen it? Never have, but I've heard of it. Wow. You're, you're better than me then. Yeah. I was like, for some reason, in the back of my head, this is something has said it was influenced by that or something I watched had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. So I'll watch it and see what's going on. It won an Oscar, I think. And I think it, the movie won an Oscar. And I'm sure that Jane Fonda won like best actress mm-hmm. on Oscar that year. Wow. That's what I said after I watched the movie. Yeah. Now I'll have you know. Jennifer watched part of it. My wife watched part of it with me too. And she was like, we've got to recommend this to Ron. So I was sitting around talking to Ron and he loves the movie. Of course. So what does that tell you? (laughs) It means there are flawed characters, Uh which he likes. He likes those flawed characters. Mm -hmm. The part that I don't like is they sit around and don't do much. Uh But you guys say, if you go back and look at some of those early 70s movies, and late wow, 60s, it's such a trip. there were times where we've gotten so used to like the action, action never lets up at every five seconds. And I can remember movies that were supposed to be these dun, 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 the so-and-so syndrome, like the Andromeda strain. And you're like going, I don't really feel that like pulse pounding well, time seconds count. Up, yeah. And I'll loop around the other movie that I watched that was going off. And I probably got the DVD of it around here somewhere is Christopher Reeve's Superman. The very first one. Oh, love it. Classic. Ugh. Yeah. I love Christopher Reeves as Superman, but I forgot how long it takes you to get to some Superman in the first movie. Oh, sure. Yeah. For ever. Because back then, well, maybe everyone doesn't know his origin. So here comes the origin story. Yeah. That's... But it takes 20 minutes to get done with Brando. Yeah. My son. I will send you across the Well, stars. because Brando was in it, they had to give him ample But I was like, time. I was vaguely remembering it because I, I can't remember how long it's been since I've seen this movie, but I was like, I think it's like at least 20 minutes before Superman shows up. And it's like, no, that's not it. It's at least an hour before Superman shows up. And maybe more than that, I think about the hour mark is when he shows up in the fortress of solitude and like flies across the screen. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to Metropolis and you've got to do all the Clark Kent reporter stuff mm-hmm. before you finally see him like 
uh, lift the helicopter or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. But that movie is like two and a half hours long. It's oh, yeah. almost two movies oh, by itself. Oh, when it first came out, I remember this was like, oh, dad, oh, dad, you know, take me to see it. And he did. And like, you got this special fancy book that I had for years, but it's fallen apart and lost to the ages. But you got this like book because you were there the very first night and because it was such a thing and there were all these streamers and banners and ample i mean it, this was the this rollout of this movie oh, was yeah. a big event it was a big deal like they gave some book out with it like you know a commemorative thing or something well i know? saw probably saw it five ten years after the fact on network tv yeah. but even then it was still like that guy's flying yeah. that was great special effects and that's all it took yeah. it, didn't ha- it didn't have to be jam-packed with action because A, you were like, I'm getting to see a movie with Superman. That's enough by itself. Yeah. And then B, some dude is flying on screen. Oh, boy. And, and, that's it. That'll hit my adrenaline. And, and Reeves, I'm sorry, but he just, he's always going to kind of be my he's Superman. Best, baby. Yeah. And, and, and you remember Margot Kidder? She was great in that. I mean, years now, God bless time has not been kind, but has it been to any of us? But, but yeah, but I remember the part where she's like, you're holding me. Who's holding you or whatever, you know, and just, and yeah, there's a lot of great stuff in there. What color is my underwear? Yeah. Wait, what? This is yeah. in the Superman movie? Yeah. But like, I, a lot of movies, a lot of those classics, I yeah. like the second one better. Like there's some people that are like, I like Empire Strikes Back better. Yeah. Um, definitely for the second oh, one. Oh yeah. Empire will always be my favorite Star Wars movie. Uh, and yeah, me and Gary, we got when Superman two came out where he actually got to fight other supervillains, yep. dude, it's on. And like, but there was some weird, they started Donner, I think did those and he creeps in weird crap. Like at one point Superman pulls the emblem off his chest and throws <laughs> it Slowed you down. and we're looking at each other going, what the hell was that? You know, but Superman oh, well. needs another power. Yeah. His special emblem wrap you up, annoy you for a second power. O- okay. But I think it's what Terrence Stamp. Yeah. His Zods. I love yeah. the Zods. Oh, yeah. Man. No, Terrence Stamp is an awesome actor. And he was great. And the guy goes, oh, God. And he goes, that's Zod. Yeah. That's just... So back to nonstop action 70s. Yeah. Clute. Yeah. Where the action Woof. never starts. <laughs> <laughs> that one stunk on ice. Oh, wow. I'm glad Ron got some enjoyment out of it. But again, he may have seen it then. Well, when that's see, the thing. It, yeah. At that time, you were like the pacing wouldn't disrupt your chi or whatever and i mean playing osric adventures going back and playing those classic adventures and coming back and playing the fifth edition and you're like my how people's attention spans have changed how they want to interact with media has changed Mm -hmm. it's very very different so i mean it's not that there's nothing that you can go back and watch because i still love the thin man yeah which that was geez it's black and white so what's that make it oh yeah a classic no. movie is a classic movie. Right. Some things don't stand but, up to the but test definitely of time. Definitely in but. that late 60s, early 70s period, there were some movies I went back and watched, and I thought, oh, my God, the pacing in this. But I was like, you know, really? Yeah, like you said, how have we as a culture changed so much that we're – because there's some movies where, you know, people are like, oh, my God, I wish the action would let up a little bit. You know, it's just foot on the throttle and never let up, you know, and it's like, good God, you know, slow down. I remember, I remember running an adventure where sometimes I've been known to just – this is a con adventure. We've only got four hours, and I, you, I want you to feel like you got your money's worth, and I'll just – just nonstop. And I had one guy at the end of it going, oh, my God, I'm having palpitations like – you know, can we can we back off the action for a second? And you're like, all right. No, know. this is the game that kills you. That's right, you know. But I figured out uh, what was behind this clute, why clute was in my brain. Uh-huh. There's an episode of American Dad, uh-huh. the greatest story never told, which is a Christmas episode, uh-huh. and he has to go back in time to kill Jane Fonda on the set of clute. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've got that background. I can enjoy that joke just so much better. Dang. Totally worth the two hours of my life or whatever the, it was. Those, those weird little call outs though. That is a yep. total Seth MacFarlane, you know? Well, that's like one of the things that I laughed the hardest I ever did on Simpsons was at one point Homer's talking about like when he went to New York and the mishaps he had and he falls down an open manhole cover. And at that point in the story, you hear him go off off camera, go, and that's when the chuds came. And I laugh my ass off because I know what chuds are. If you didn't watch crappy horror movies in the eighties, you, you, you don't get that joke, you know, but anyway, ha ha. All right. Um, anything else you want to say about movies? Um, they're awesome, and I enjoy them commonly, All right. frequently. Video games. I know you don't have any of those. Video games. I've been funny. You should mention that I've had a real hankering 
to go back and play the game whose name I can never remember, but it's like whatever. Man. No, Darkness. Uh, the one we. The Darkness. Dark the, Souls. No, no. Uh, the, the one with all the zombies in the parkour. Oh, Dying Light? Dying Light. That's it. Dying Light. Yeah. See, I can never hmm. remember. Why can I not remember Dying Light? But Dying Light, I've kind of had a hankering to want to play that again. And I've had a, I was having an itch for Dark Souls for a minute there. Yeah. Which, you know, Dark Souls, good stuff. But luckily, I had two really fantastic games that I've had back to back. And I'm like, I don't remember when I've had a run of games that this, this, this good where it's like, man, that was fantastic. And then the follow up was fantastic. So I'm talking about Ghost of Tsushima. Gesundheit. And uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. So Ghost of Tsushima is a lot like Witcher and some people would say Assassin's Creed or one of those. Um, I've talked about it in depth, but I'll tell you that one. Again, I'll plug it. It's fantastic. Run out and get it. Um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is basically Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It's a mm. loving homage Hmm. But it's quite the homage. There's a lot of like, oh, oh this is this. But it was done, like I said, with love. So I, I'm enjoying it. Uh, if you enjoyed Castlevania's uh, Symphony of the Night and you want some more, this one is really good for you. So check it out. I've just about got it beaten. And I think I'm about 20 hours in or something. So that's not wow. really long. I'm sure Symphony of the Night was much, much longer. Now back up the, the previous one, the... Yeah, let's hear you say it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, that was that the one you were talking about? Like you really feel like a badass samurai? Yes. Yeah, because a lot of people, people, it's if they trust you by now, they'd be like, well, okay, Eddie said it's good, it's good. But sometimes, like, well, why is it good? You were, t I asked you that question, and you told me and it sounded, it sounded really cool. Which is the fact that, like, basically, you can like call out one of the enemy, like, go, I call you yeah. out, you know, step forward, you know, which one of you will fight? Yeah, and yeah, and you step forward and just decimate them, and you know, it's kind of like those old samurai movies, though, where yeah. there's the crowd of guys, and the guy makes like five slashes, and they're all dead laying on the ground and you're like holy yeah. crap yeah you can do that in so game. you feel like a real samurai badass and that's cool that they captured that feel but if you want to do it ninja style uh -huh. you can do that too interesting so cool and that's great that they put the versatility in there yep it's like, all in there it's i like all to there play more of a sneaky guy than in your face well there you go because i like playing more of an in your face anyway so. yeah and that was definitely like i'm going to play this the honorable way yeah. it doesn't track your honor but you're like hey i'm a samurai I'm going to be the stand up guy. And if I see the enemy over there, I'm not going to go, ah, maybe I'll sneak around him or not engage. I'm like, nope, you're on my island, buddy. You're going to die. Now, in, a, in an interesting note, I just posted a video to Facebook, which was uh, the, the free company that does uh, full com full contact combat, you know, fighting or whatever with not unsharpened, but live steel. I don't know. Anyway, but it's interesting because they talked British about it. Steel? In, huh? British steel. Probably because that's of the our best. Fans will get a laugh out of exactly. That. Apparently not you, but some yeah, of our yeah. fans maybe. But uh, what was interesting is they had a thing where basically, like, to to truly be honorable, you, you're you're calling your shots and stuff like that. Yeah, so which makes it that much more challenging. Like, like I'm gonna hit you in the yeah, shoulder. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you in the arm or the head or whatever. And then when they do, you're like, damn. <laughs> you but know? Then it'd be like, how much do I suck? I knew what was coming, and yeah, I couldn't but, do anything about it. But it was. It's, it's actually watch a few minutes of it. It's it's not bad, and it's they having a lot of fun. And uh, I won't lie, watching it made me miss uh, fighting. What if I took a two by four, two by four, and hit you as hard as I can in your hip bone? Would that help? <laughs> satiate your need as, i always remember that story well yeah i mean a, as it is it's like this week i had kind of a hitch in my giddy up for a couple of days man of a certain age and i remember thinking is this some remnant of of those days or whatever but oh i used to have bruises all over me but you know it's funny the worst nastiest big purple black green bruise that would last two weeks and be up and down your thigh wouldn't hurt at all and there'd be times where someone would wrap you in the right spot and there wouldn't be a bruise, but it would hurt like a mug. But I think it's like a deep tissue bruise or something. Deep but, tissue. Yeah. But anyway, those were the days. I used to do full armored combat, you know, back in my early, early to mid 40s. So mm. anyway, it was a lot of fun. So yeah. long ago. Not that long, but long enough. I don't think I could do that crap now. I was telling that to somebody and they were like, so you're admitting you're old. And I'm like, I don't know about that, but I'm admitting there's a time to kind of say, you know, I had my fun and, 
anyway. But it was, I missed it. It was a lot of fun. All right. Uh, anything else in the pop culture realm that you want to talk about? Not that I can think of, sir. We're making a deep run into this episode and we haven't got to our topic, but I don't think yeah. we have just a ton of stuff on that. Yeah, a lot of that ground's been covered. Um, so this is traditionally where I give my 1E update, I think, the Osric. Yeah. So as you may or may not last remember, we ventured, ventured into Ravenloft. So I'm trying to remember what last I have reported if they had actually gone into Ravenloft or not. I don't, I don't think, think you've heard the story at all, but in that no. little like five minute blurb or something that I mm -hmm. did, it might've been like, and now we're in Ravenloft. So they successfully got into Ravenloft. And I think I, I talked about the, that there's two letters mm -hmm. spoiler for a yeah, 50 year old the, module or what have you. Either, I think we had that conversation, but maybe not on the podcast. So if I didn't say it on the podcast already, spoilers for the 100 year old module now, but there's a letter that gets sent out that says, please come help us. And once you come into Ravenloft and it's too late to get out, there's another letter. You find the real letter on the uh, body of a dead messenger that says, please seal this off, seal our area off with holy symbols and forget about us. We're as good as dead. Don't come in here. You'll just die with us. Mm -hmm. wah, wah. So they got those two letters, but they skimmed over the second one and went, ah, this just says the same thing. So they had missed out on a lot of plot points there. Mm-hmm. So then they ended up meeting up with Irina, who is uh, Strahd's victim. That's the person that he wants to. And she's been bitten like two times. One more time. So they hold up in the uh, Burgermeister's Manor for the night. This is where they're going to fight off uh, Strahd for the night to try and protect the girl. Mm -hmm. So they get the first round of attacks, which a bunch of wolves and bats attack the house. I don't think anybody really got too injured. Somebody got bit by a wolf, but it wasn't any great shakes on the damage. Oh, actually, I will say, here's a funny one for you, just to show you guys what a dick I am. <laughs> they The whole building was sealed up because I've kind of described this as like a walking dead or night of the living dead, where it's like everything in this place is already sealed up. You can reinforce it or whatever, but everything is sealed up because they've been getting these attacks. Mm -hmm. So they decide they're going to unseal one window. Because why wouldn't you? Because why wouldn't you? They want to be able to see what's going on outside. Uh -huh. So they unseal one window. <laughs> and this is just a humorous idea. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you guys. They leave this one window unsealed. And then the Burgermeister is already dead. He's been dead before you've even gotten into the adventure. Mm -hmm. So they take his body and prop it up in front of the window, weekend at Bernie's style, <laughs> and leave a candle in his hand as like a decoy or something. <laughs> See, that's already a humorous setup. Uh -huh. uh, good work, gang. So they start hearing these wolves in the background. You know, you're building up to shit's about to hit the fan. Mm-hmm. So they're peeking through this door and here's where we need a video video podcast again as I'm acting it out for Matt. They're just peeking through this door and watching that window. And I see you, you see this massive wolf. I mean, it's the size of a small freaking pony or something. It's this big dire wolf. It's just charging up towards that window. What are you going to do? I just watch. Yeah, okay. It's charging up. It's coming. It's coming. What are you doing? Nothing. Okay, just watching. Okay. About the time it gets up to that window, it veers off to the side. It doesn't try and get in. It doesn't jump in. It just veers off to the side of the house. And they're like, what? And I was like, so as soon as that wolf gets out of sight, what you do see is this little beam of flame come flying into the house. And you have just enough time to be like, oh shit, that's a fireball. So through that window, boom, <laughs> rocks the house, completely burns that body into ashes. And I think maybe hit two of the party members doing not a phenomenal amount of damage. I don't, but I don't still. know if anybody went down from it, but that's a good wake up call. Like you're not dealing with just some scrub out here. You're dealing with my man, Strahd. Yeah. For those two of you might not know this guy's a big fan of Strahd and that whole genre of Ravenloft or whatever. So, oh yeah. So he's like rubbing his hands together. Yep. Yeah. So then the wolves and bats start coming in after that. 
Mm-hmm. Because why not? They've got an open space to do it. Mm-hmm. So they come in and harass the party a little bit and then mysteriously leave. Okay. They, they're not really like pressing the attack. They come in and harass them a little bit and leave. Yeah. A couple of hours later, they start hearing these noises again. It's like, ah, here comes the next round. Mm-hmm. So they're hearing bumps and thuds and stuff like that. And this time they've closed off. They didn't close off the window, but they closed off that room. They're like, screw that. We don't need any peak hole now. So they've blocked that all up for furniture. So they really can't see what's going on until they start peeking out the back. And they see these zombies coming towards them because they've busted open the back door. Mm-hmm. So they're fighting with the zombies. And uh, Strahd's like, if you just send her out, I'll let you go. You can just walk away. Just, just walk, walk away. away. So he's been making them the, this offer. The first, the first attack round, they're like, nah. The first time they got attacked by just the wolves and stuff, they're like, nah, screw it. Then the zombies come in. The cleric's like, I got this. There's zombies. I'm fifth level cleric. He's like, I auto turn zombies. T he. I'm like, not in the demi plane you know, of dread, but not here. So he's like, I say, make a roll for it. Nope. He, he's got a pretty good roll, yeah. but not good enough. So the zombies keep coming. And that's when the cleric's like, screw that noise. <laughs> and, you know, goes back in there. And uh, so they're watching the zombies approach. And finally, they engage in two, with two of the zombies. So they hit them. And they, like, knock them down. And I'm like, yeah, they're, they seem real flimsy and poorly even held together now. That they're so rotted or Are something. They juju just fall zombies? Apart. Something like that. Yeah. Where they do fall apart when damaged but their body parts keep crawling and attacking. So that's when the party is like, I've had enough of that. Crap. <laughs> We're sending her out. <laughs> so everything stops uh, as the party is deciding. We're going to send her out, right? Yeah. We're done with her. Wow. Big darn heroes. So I was like, I don't care. Because they're, they're like, what are the rewards for this? But this is the old school D&D, right? Nowadays, it would just be like, what? No, you know, we're heroes and all that stuff. Old school D&D, it's like, we're adventurers out to make our fortunes in cash. Eh, you know, if it's if it's expedient, you know, we'll be heroes. Yeah. Nobody has offered them a million dollars to do this. Uh-huh. They're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't have to be the good guys. If you want to play an evil party or something someday, I don't care. You know, whatever is entertaining to you. Yeah. I'm not forcing you to be like, we're yeah. goody two shoes heroes. No, or you're whatever. mercenaries. So if you want to do this out of the goodness of your heart or whatever, fine. Yeah. If you're like, screw it, I'm fine with that. I'm not like, oh, shame, shame. Yeah, you're not going to play the, the, yeah. So they're like, let's kick her out. Well, she's in there with her brother. Uh-huh. So the brother's like, no, 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 you can't do it. You can't do it. And they're like, let's get them. So they, the party attacks the two NPCs, the girl who's trying to fight for her life against Strahd and her brother who's trying to protect her uh-huh. from getting thrown out of the house to the vampire. Oh, by the wow. party. I wish I could see my expression, but yeah. Video podcast. Yeah. So they knock out the brother. Mm-hmm. And then that's a non-lethal thing, which I don't even know if in Osric days and first edition you could. I yeah, think you could do like, like flat of the blade yeah, or something yeah, like p- that and do p- less pommel, damage. Yeah, it's where I think you you did half damage, but it was subdual. Yeah, or something. but not like a uh, fifth edition where you can go. Well, I know I just m- smashed him with my axe, but I want it to be non-lethal. Psh. But back in the day, yeah, I think you did like half damage, or and maybe that's even a three point five. You even had to take a penalty because you were like it's a little more harder harder because you were trying to hold back or not be lethal or whatever. So it's like, we'll take a minus two and you do half damage. Like, Ew, okay. But they're quickly able to overcome him mm-hmm. and knock him out. And I said, what about her? And they're like, well, we're just going to pick her up and throw her out. And then they're like, one person is like, nope, she's going to die. Wow. So she, but then it was at this point, he wants her. If they kill her, he's going to be pissed Thank off. Thank you. Welcome to my world. Yeah. Okay. The, I, I put that together in about a half a second. I mean, so, okay. <laughs> so, so they decide she's going to die. Oh, my. So uh, for people that haven't played Osric in first edition in a while, this one, when you hit minus 10 is when you're dead, dead. Unless most of the time, if you're a critter. And you're just like, I'm not going to bother that. They die at zero. Like you're fighting the goblins. The goblins die at zero. Yeah. They're going to be like, we're going to have to wait and let them bleed out or something. But I was like, she's kind of a special case. So let's see. 
So boom, she's down. She's at a negative one, un, mm-hmm. unbeknownst to the party. Mm-hmm. So they just go, she's dead, and throw her out. Mm-hmm. And somebody is pissed. Yeah. But she's not dead dead. Yeah. So I'm like, he doesn't have a healing potion in his pocket. Yeah. Even if he wanted to, if he's like, I'm going to make this the most special moment of your life, baby. Yeah. So he's like, I, that's it. He has got to turn her. Yeah. So he turns her right then. Yeah. And that's it. They leave. Because mm-hmm. like you said, technically he would be freaking madder than a wet hen. He would be completely pissed. And oh, it's yeah. like, well, do I just wipe them off the board right here and go, he unleashes hell on you guys. And that is that. Yeah. So I said, nope, this is what I'm going to do. So they had thrown the brother out the front and they had him knocked unconscious for a while. I rolled to go, this is when he's going to wake up. And they hadn't had any sleep that night. So the wizard decides he's going to bed and everybody else is staying up and guarding until the sun comes up. Mm -hmm. So when the sun comes up and they've got everything back together and they're like, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to get out of here. I said, you hear that her brother is outside yelling at you and you hear glass breaking. And uh, he's like, you guys, at least you'll be stuck here in hell with me. And they're hearing this glass break out front. So they're like, okay, uh, we sneak out the back. Mm -hmm. So they sneak out the back because we're so early into this adventure. This is their first night in Ravenloft. Wow. And they were going to go get their fortunes told by the gypsies. I'd given them that one, like, oh, and this is what you should do tomorrow in the bright day. Which, by the way, are we okay using that word? I am. Okay, good. It's in the module. So yeah. that's just one of those throwback things. Yeah. And it's, as I was saying, all these things, it's intent. We're not being derogatory here. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, they're going to go get their fortunes told. They want to do that. Once they go make it to the camp, there's nobody there. Oops. Why? Because everybody in this area knows that Strahd is pissed. pissed. You need, if you can get out of here right now, you need to get He's out of here. He's going to be on the war path. Yeah. So they've left. So they start following the trail. Where did the gypsies go? We'll follow them. So they walk into the mist. And as you know, this is a choking mist. Mm-hmm. So they walk into the mist and choke to death and die. And it was one of the lamest TPKs ever, but they wandered around in the mist, got lost and just choked to death and died. And there's not a chance like, Oh, this is starting to choke me. I need to run back the way we came. They continued on. Even when you said it's starting, you feel your throat closing up. Wow. And then they got far enough in that they're like, we should get out of here. I'm like, okay, which way? Yeah, you're you've gotten yourself really far in here now. Because this stuff discombobulates you, and oh wow, well you know they've just had a a, a, a harsh lesson in Ravenloft 101. So for those of you that may know your Ravenloft lore pretty well, mm-hmm. do you know how the gypsies get back and forth through the mist? Because they have potions that they drink to get them through. Yeah. Guess what the brother was smashing outside on the door that the potions morning. that would have helped them get back through. Cause I was like, Strahd's mad at you, but it did end up working to his favor. Yeah. He ended up getting her just so with he, his timeline. He gives you the potions. He's wow. like, it's one of these, like get out by dark. Yeah. You've got the potions. If you leave, that's that. If you're still here, it's your ass. Yeah. But if you make it out in time, so that's what he was smashing outside, what the brother was smashing outside. If they had come out the front and said, what the hell's going on? Yeah. They would have seen that he was smashing potion bottles. Yeah. Wow. wow right? Yeah. Pretty cool. Very cool. Very cool. Good work. So, well played, sir. Well done. Well done. But that's so. how our Ravenloft adventure ended. And uh, we were talking so about So how many it. TPKs is that for this group now? I think they've only totally two, TPKed. Right? This will be two, yeah. but they've near TPKed. Another time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, and they did, they did sleep in the wrong inn in that mm. one where it's like, if you sleep in the wrong inn, you're done. Yeah, so the, it's like, ugh. Something of the serpent god or whatever, but which that is a classic. Is, some of it you could say that's first edition. Mm-hmm. Some of it you could say they have a real a-hole as a GM. Like, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then some of it is just change in mindsets between fifth edition and first edition. And, and that shift has not occurred yet, but well, we'll see. Yeah. 
So we continue on, but uh, it was one of those, uh, we were talking about it, and uh, they made it one night in Ravenloft, and it was like, well, what's the worst any party has ever done that when you run Ravenloft or something? And I was like, probably one night in Ravenloft. <laughs> so I'm not laughing at you guys. I'm laughing with you guys. <laughs> I'm laughing near you, not at you. Approximately. Oh, man. But, it, you know, what? The, but the, again, this is a great appreciation you know, and, and that's what they wanted, right? It was like, we exactly want to see what the old, old school, school was feeling. like. And I mean, un, 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 old school was not quite as forgiving. It's definitely not. Yeah. But then again, when you had a character that made it to something like 10th level, 12th level, you felt like a total badass. And that accomplishment, was like now, if like, you know, maybe 10th level, 5th edition, who cares? You know, or something. But in the old school days, if you made something like 10th level, you were like, hell yeah. Well, in you this know. one, I will say that now that they're fifth level, mm -hmm. it's more like the wizard can go, oh, yeah, screw everything. I've got a fireball now. Yeah. And the cleric can go, I can turn just about everything now, just yeah. automatically. And it's like, okay, now when you're presented with something that you can't turn and can't where fireball. fireball is fairly worthless because it's fodder, yeah. I can throw scrubs at you all night. So mm -hmm. whoopee if you take out... Yeah. That's where I old I always say old school gaming was a thinking man's game. Yep. You know, you, you and your enemies are chess pieces. You're playing a game of chess. Well, the things you have are resources. How do you use those resources? Because nowadays, again, there's not really resource management. We're different with cantrips. Oh, I can just blaze those all day long. And I'm not saying the cantrips are a bad thing. And I'm not saying that the, first, the older ways were better per se, but it's a different style of play. And, it's a different style of play. And I'll go back to watching Clute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you've got the choice, but what's some big action movie right now? What's the latest hot thing? Nothing's coming to my mind. Uh, the, the Furious, Fast and the Furious, or something. Well, uh, how about Fury Road? If Fury Road. Oh yeah, which well, that's action packed the whole time. Yeah, literally. I remember us leaving there and like my heart was racing. I mean, wow, what a movie! It but never lets up. It's. I mean, it's the difference between, and I know it's different genres, but I mm -hmm. mean, you've got something like Clute. Mm -hmm. which could be the thinking man's movie, just the thinking man that I don't like. Mm -hmm. And uh, fifth edition being your action packed adventure. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's never an adventure that requires thought, but a little bit more like that maybe mm -hmm. in broad strokes. Yeah. And I'm not saying either one is wrong. It's just, They're I different. think it's hard to go back and appreciate certain mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Well, so I, it'd be funny whenever y'all and, and, and y'all are playing classics. These are, I think you, you hand picked these hand curated, curated this list because you went to a number of websites where they had basically vetted what are the greatest old school mods it was of all dragon time. magazine's 30 30 greatest modules of all time and per and then i took off anything that was like third or fourth or even second edition stuff wow so it would be and there wasn't a lot of them to cut off yeah. but i mean these things are going to be weighed like if you ask what's the greatest adventure of all time you're going to probably get a lot more first edition answers especially sure. at that point in time yeah but yeah, so that's really neat. I mean, I hope they appreciate the, that. Because that's I, I'm jealous. I wish I could be in the game. So, but just conflict of stuff. Well, it's middle of the day. That right, eliminates a lot of people from being yeah. able to play. Right. Um. But uh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Now that we're over an hour. Oh wow! Yeah, let's get to into it. Into this podcast, I don't think we've got a lot on this topic no. but as i have mentioned before our good friend and friend of the con doug ray recently mm -hmm. passed away due to cancer mm -hmm. um, we just wanted to take a moment and tell some stories reminisce a little bit um, what was it about two weeks ago that mm -hmm. we attended his funeral yeah. about a week ago that you went to the kind of ntrpg warehouse remembrance of doug mm -hmm. so if anything Yes, yeah, sadly, I couldn't be there for Friday. Um, and I was there Saturday a little late because of traffic. And uh, But it was really nice in a way because I never, you know, it's kind of like us running a con. If you came up and said, boy, I really think, you know, Eddie and Matt are great and I want to hang out with them. If you came up to our con, you'd quickly realize, well, they don't have any time for me. Yeah, we're running a con. Yeah, that's the worst time to hang out. So with. I never really got to know, probably wouldn't have got to know Doug that well if it weren't for getting to spend time with him away from the con. And same principle with Mike. He's always running the con or he, he or he's off and away or helping, you know, behind the scenes. 
So we've really never got a chance to sit down and talk that much. And so it was nice Saturday. He and I got to have a, a nice just he and I and one other person for a part of that time got to chat. Everybody cleared out really quick. And at first I was like, wow. But then, you know, what? I was like, I'm, I'm, I wasn't upset because he and I really got a chance to, to communicate. It's nice. Um, but anyway, and he told me to let us know, you know, that Doug had some very nice things to say about us. So that was very sweet. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. Um, um, Doug though, Luckily, we were. He invited us to go on a trip with him to Wisconsin, um, which has its own episode. Yeah, I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm just saying, if yeah. you guys want to hear more in detail, definitely go check out that episode. Yeah, and that's why I'm wondering if I cost crossing some of the same ground again. Mm -hmm. But Jim Ward's health has not been great, and he's wet when Doug would invite a lot of the old guard to his con every year. Jim Ward was invited and came out a number of times. But in recent years, his health is just so poor, he hasn't been able to come. But he reached out to Doug, and Doug had kept in communication with him. And basically, it was like, oh, I've, I've got some new stuff I want to, uh, for Metamorphosis Alpha, I want to play test. And boy, sure, nice to see you, and you know how to come out. So Doug, he could have just came out on his own volition, just drove, flown, whatever. But luckily for us, he invited, he wanted to take a group. And so it was uh, me and Eddie, uh, Gary O., uh, Brian um, and Charlie um, and uh, just so honored to get to go on that trip and had so much fun and the best part of that was it was a chance to hang out with Doug away from the con so we mm -hmm. really got to know Doug because we had certain preconceived notions and uh, anyway but the trip we, we got to know who were you who, disabused of those notions yes but anyway but no I mean but Doug was just awesome um I think this I'm probably covered ground before, but yeah, basically the the thing of it was was Gary O was driving, and uh, Doug was tasked with keeping him awake and alert. So the funny thing was Doug was just doing this running commentary on what we would drive past and riff on it, and it was amusing many a times, you know. And of course the old classic and excuse my salty language, but. At one point, he's looking, he's like, yeah, this restaurant, I've ate there before, it's pretty good, you know, I got good service, and da, da, da. And also, we're driving past the Walmart, he takes a long pause, and he turns back to the rest of the vehicle and goes, you know what, guys, fuck Walmart. <laughs> and so, that was our thing, anytime we'd see Doug at the con, the first thing in our mouth would be like, hey, Doug, and he'd go, yeah, we'd go, fuck Walmart, and he'd go, yeah, fuck Walmart. You know? Do you remember what kind of got that started? It was the self-checkout thing. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty funny. He was like, that's bullshit. I don't work for Walmart. I'm not going to check myself out, you know, anyway. But, yeah. But, uh, and so it's funny when we see, you know, Stanley, where that's usually our little password to the club kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Oh, jiggly bits. But anyway. Um, Those uh, guys staying up all night before yeah. we were going to travel back the next day at what were we gonna leave at like six yeah we left we left at six like at the crack of dawn to drive back to texas from wisconsin and whereas it's funny was we had 20 somethings sure they can pull this off us who were like we were good till about 11 or 12 and we're like yeah it's getting old like we closed one bar and it's like we're going to another bar and me and this one and we're like yeah good night like we ain't lightweights we hung till midnight but it's like we gotta get on the road tomorrow and we're at this point, we're freaking shoot. We may have to drive. So yeah. So the old dogs, and we had stayed up the whole trip there, which ended up being one million hours. And was, we stayed up the night before, where I think I was asked to run a game, and I ran uh, uh, Brendan LaSalle's wonderful Hole in the Sky till about twelve or one. But I'm trying to think, was that like a sixteen hour trip? Yeah, sixteen hours one way, so it was like a thirty two hour round trip. But we had a very circuitous route, and the rooms weren't ready as soon as we were there. Man. So we had like stopped for lunch and to see game hole. So that added, I don't know, three or four hours right there. Yeah. Alex Cameron was really gracious and Very he, much. he owns a, a pub and inn or a pub and restaurant, whatever, you know, and, uh, that's really neat. He, it's old, old, old one that he renovated and he showed us his game room upstairs, the original game hole, hence game hole con. And that room's amazing. And then he was like, you guys, your lunch is on me. I got to go take care of some business. Fantastic lunch. Oh, that food was awesome. And they had some craft beers that were just delicious. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, that was, that was part of the fun, too. Which, just because you said it, I'm going to tell our, that story that I love so much. Mm -hmm. Because you had uh, 
Alex and Doug and me in this conversation, I think, yeah. where it was like a, they were talking about how the convention attendance was doing. And I don't, what were, what were we on? Like long con two or yeah. NTRPG two or so, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Alex is saying, talking about game hole. He's like, yeah, I think our la- latest attendance was like 5,000. And Doug was like, yeah, we we're about 500 for our last one because NTRPG is capped out. They want to keep it small. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I think our last one was about 50. <laughs> So it was all <laughs> by fives. <laughs> Just there were some zeros missing here and there. Yep. Yeah. But uh, no, but uh, um, it was really neat because all we ever, all I ever knew was like, we're going to game with Jim Ward. And as anybody knows me knows, I love post APOC. The original science fiction role playing game was Metam- Metamorphosis Alpha written by Jim Ward. And again, the first post apocalyptic role playing game was, you know, Gamma World. Uh, which is science fantasy, whatever, by again, Jim Ward. So I was really, uh, you know, tickled to get to game with Jim Ward, having no idea. Oh, yeah, then we got to meet and game with Ernie Gygax. Holy crap. And, and we got to meet Alex Kammer and eat at the, at the game hole. So, I mean, all that combined, what a, what a great bunch of little bonus. And then we got to walk around um, Lake Geneva, which is the birthplace of D&D, and so we got some pictures in front of the original Gygax home and some other places that, you know, we got to kneel down by the brick and all that sort of thing. So, I mean, yeah, we're just a great trip, great memories. And we have Doug to thanks for, thank for that. Yeah. If there was, if it hadn't been for Doug, there yeah. would be no NTRPG, which there would be no long con. No, there'd be no long con. There wouldn't be a podcast if there was right. no long con. Yeah. Me and Matt might not still be hanging around. We may, may have never become good buddies. We might have just been game acquaintances like we talked about. Right, right. So, My so life I mean, would be so much better. I know. So thanks, Doug. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. There's so much. And a lot of times when you are talking about Doug, it's about all the experiences that he yeah. created for you. Yeah. Well, you have to think of how many people have been brought together. If it wasn't for NTRPG, I wouldn't know the Barshes. I just think a whole lot of, you know, Ben and Bill and, um, you know, we would never met Ben Burns, you know, Ben Burns is a friend. We like Ben, you know, and, uh, that's just, I, I could go on and on. I, Ben was going to be upset. Well, we never probably would have met, you know, Matt, Ian, you know, John Watson, you know, people that we love gaming with. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, thanks Doug. You know, but, and I've often said at one point, I think he had more money invested in the long con than we did. Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was our patron in so many ways. Him and Mike gave us so many good pointers and good advice. Like I said, sometimes dispense with a bit of snark, but still we got so much. Don't have one. Don't do it. Yeah. Um, and there were times where I'll tell, we saw things they did that worked and we stole it with both hands and there are times where we'd go, I don't know why they do it that way. We'll do it our way. And then we'd come back and go, Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give you this one. Doug yeah. was famously against selling any t-shirts at the con. Yeah. And we're like, we're going to sell our t-shirts at our con. Yeah. We're like that. And we sat on t-shirts from the very first long con. We finally sold the last one. Like, but sometimes they do well. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, that one was more a, 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 an issue of how many. And that first we time we learned, you don't necessarily need to get quite that many T-shirts. So that was a learning experience. But yeah, and, and I will say that talking to Mike this last Saturday, they're going to try stick true to the way Doug's want, Doug wanted to do things and the way, you know, between uh, Mike, David, you know, who's Doug's son, and uh, um, and Gary O. They're, they're yeah. Uh, they're going to stay true to the way Doug wanted things done, but they are going to try to things like I said, Hey, if y'all would have some of the old designs available on some website like T public, I would go get the year 10 shirt right now, you know? And so he's like, that's the kind of things they're considering or mugs. Like I love my year 10 mug. I drank coffee out of it this morning, but what if it, heaven forbid, knock on wood got broken. It'd be nice to be able to go get another one. Or maybe I want three of them or something. They're really cool mugs. And I love that design. So Anyway, um, so but the, so those are some of the things they're looking at trying to have to kind of monetize a little bit, but not without besmirching the integrity of NTRPG. Yeah, it'll be different regardless. Yeah. I mean, it just has to change because yeah. Doug had such a big impact on it. Well, yeah, I mean, Doug's it was uh, his party. Yeah, his 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 footprint was all over that, you know, and uh, Doug Doug was awesome. He'll be missed. Um, you know, and we were glad that to have had the chance to know him, you know? Oh yeah. Good friend. Um, I will always remember the 
last at the moment, uh, long con, long mm-hmm. con 2020 mm-hmm. COVID con right there at prime time yeah. where he called me up just so excited about all the special guests that he was going to get to attend the long con yeah. because their NTRPG 2020 was really in the heat of oh, COVID. Yeah. And in a place Dallas that was kind of getting a lot of shade thrown on it and whatever. So they had to do less the special for that one. stayed away in droves. Well, so did regular attendees. attendees. Oh, sure. But, yeah, I mean, everybody's got to do what's best for their safety. Sure, sure. Who knows what could have happened. But we were there. But just him calling me in the middle of the night. And I think, I can't remember what it was now, if I was asleep or in the shower or something like that when he had originally called me. And I ended up having to call him back. And he's not going to answer the phone for anybody. All right. Because you are you don't need to have his secret line. Yeah. So I called him, and then he turned around and called me back. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was just the middle of the night, and he was just telling me how excited he was about yeah. this person's going to come, this person's going to come. And uh, at that time, I think even uh, Ernie Gygax he had been talking to about yeah, coming down. Yeah. And so, so can you imagine our tiny little con having, you know, all having these, the bragging rights of a, yeah, saying we had Chris the Gygax Chris Clark and, you know, Diesel, you know, and – and all these other people, which I'm so glad Chris came. I just, I, him and his wife are such awesome people. Yeah, and I love Chris, Chris is, Clark. He's phenomenal. Just a great guy. And so I'm glad that he got to come. And it was like, and we did that specialty dinner for them, which was really cool. But it's, I wish Doug could have been there for the last NTRPG, but his health didn't allow for it. But I'm honored that he got to attend and participate in our long, the one and only long con spring. So far. So far. And, uh, he, he ran a game, and I hope people that were in that game will cherish that. And he put them to bed. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. There was kids in the game. Mm-hmm. There was people older than us in the game. Yeah. And he was he was a really rough shape at that time. But you wouldn't know it. Yeah. I got, I've got pictures of him because he was in what we're now calling the, you know, the Doug Ray, you know, commemorative memorial room, whatever. Yeah, the that's Doug Ray our room. conference room is going to be And now. that conference room, room is ooh la la. Yep. And so I remember looking through the glass wall door and there he is standing up, not sitting down, standing up, running a game, standing. Players yawning as and, it's the it, dark, wee hours of the yeah, night. it's like 10, they, 11. He's gesturing. Like, wah, 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 as usual, he's got that. I seriously, folks, he had this mischievous grin. For sure. Like, like a little kid who's, who's on to something or knows a secret you don't know and a twinkle in his eye. And these people have no idea that this guy is really at the end with this cancer. And he, 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 he stayed in his room because he felt so poorly. But you better believe, what a showman, what a trooper, what a, what a badass Marine. When it came showtime, he came downstairs, cleaned and polished, walked in there, ran that game, ran it for a good, Jesus, five, six hours or something. And then and it never lit up, full steam, standing, gesturing. You never know. And then, I mean, and then it went right back to bed, of course. And we yeah. didn't see him till. He what? got ready to leave. The ready next to day. leave the next day because he was. It was. It probably took everything he had. But that was that was Doug, man. He was his badass. But anyway, uh, Bad Mike did do a really good uh, remembrance of him on Tinkar's Tavern. You can find that on YouTube and yeah, definitely. get some more stories that I we won't retell here. Right, right. Well, but you definitely uh, they're uh, not our stories to tell. Exactly. But yeah, Mike has some great stories. Go listen to that. Check it out. Um, for those who don't know Doug, and you know, some of y'all listeners don't, but Doug, you know, they're him and Mike are the, the big guys at NTRPG, which is our favorite con. We love that con. That's the highlight of my year, you know, and that's not long con. Well, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, but anyway, well, you're the one that always says if you can only go to one con, go to NTRPG, but if you yep. can go to two, then come see us, come see us. So anyway, but, but like I said, there wouldn't be no long con if it wasn't for NTRPG. Um, and you know, it was such a fluke. I mean, sometimes I'm like, was it an ad on Facebook or something? I'm not remember how I heard, but there was an old school con that had a lot of the old guard, you know, one E D and D guys showing up there as special guests. And the thing is, you have to remember this is before it was fashionable. This yeah. is in the fourth edition days. Yeah. This is when I would look over to Matt and go, this might be the last generation that ever plays D and D. Cause fourth it was, was dire. Oh so, yeah. It wasn't that it was, you know that bad of a game but it was just dead and that so was like old maligned, people crap much maligned but i so but i remember you always going you know what made me think about it was you always were telling me yeah well i'm really more of an old second edition guy second edition guy and uh 
And I used to go to cons years ago and live in Greyhawk Day. So I thought, man, it'd be fun to go back to a con. You like old school stuff. This might be a good fit. I'd love to see and get stuff signed by, you know, the old guard. Hey, we ought to go to this. We went on a total fluke. And who knowing that this would be this bond for us and help us make so many awesome friendships with so many cool people like David, you know, Donahue. And, and I could go on and on. I mean, so many people that we've met there and become friends with that we just really love those people. And we have Doug to thank for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What do you think else you'd like to add? Uh, there's probably things that I should, but no, I think that's where we can leave it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, anyway, rest in peace, Doug. We love you, man. And um, you know, we'll um, hopefully good energy for you know Gary and Mike and David, you know, and and they carry the torch and all that stuff. And I'll change up the ending of this one to yeah. just say, hey, thanks for everything, Doug. Yep. We salute you. Salute you.